Welcome back to First Cut. John Dunning here with Jason Alt talking about 2018's Japanese documentary, Inland Sea, directed by Katsuhiro Soda. ここまで入っとった。もう自殺しよう思って。自殺する気で。おばさん。私が生きとってもダメじゃ。So Katsuhiro Soda is a documentarian known for case studies on peoples, towns, and communities. And in this film, on Inland Sea, uh, he focuses on a Japanese fishing town of Ushimato, a community that's pretty much on the verge of extinction due to like modernization and global warming, told by the residents and the businesses. Jason, what did you think of Inland Sea? Yeah, like you said, uh, he, he focused on Ushimato, um, which was the, the, the setting for the 2015 film Oyster Factory. An, an interesting bit of trivia, I guess. Um, and apparently it's uh, where Shohei Mamura set Black Rain and Dr. Akagi. So for as small as it is, there's only about 7,000 people in the, the town of Ushimato. Uh, it's for whatever reason, I guess maybe like the it's emblematic of the the problems these small coastal cities are facing, you know, with just like other industries coming by pollution, um, you know, tsunamis, erosion, you know, you name it. It's, uh, it's not a very hip place. And in fact, uh, Ushimato was like so boring. They actually merged it with two other cities to make the, the city called Setouchi in the uh, Okayama prefecture. Um, and I guess Setouchi means, inland island of seto so i guess they um you know they they they're still like okay this is like the coastal town but ushimato was so small that they just sort of made a mega city with a couple other cities so really small even the mega city quote unquote it's like thirty two thousand people so you know when you set two movies here you're gonna run into the same characters um so I say that not having seen Oyster Factory, but uh, the first thing I want to say about Inland Sea is it kind of made me want to track down uh, uh, Oyster Factory, which was the 2015 film by the same director, you know, the same setting. But it was more like, OK, we need people to work shelling oysters and nobody wants to do it and nobody wants to come here to do it. Nobody who lives here wants to do it. So, like, we got more oysters than shuckers and that's a problem. So, um I think this town means a lot to him if he's willing to to talk about the uh, the economic problems of it in two separate films. And this town has to mean a lot to the people that live there because if you watch Inland Sea, like I said at the top of the uh, at the top of the episode, this this place is dying because it, it's almost like if you've read the Dark Tower or anything, it's like the place that you know it's moved on. The world's moved on from this this little town, and it's just kind of stuck in this little pocket of. Uh, not being able to evolve because the thing that it's kind of known for and just geographically is fishing. And even that it, it's just done so 
painstakingly that it's such a pain in the ass to, to do it the way that the people, you know, the, the locals do it. Um, or it's, it's a real heartbreaking film. I, I was really looking forward to this one. And, uh, you know, I, I, I don't think it disappointed. Um, it's shot in black and white. Uh, oh, he knew what he was doing shooting this in black and white for sure. Absolutely. Uh, it, and, you know, I, I totally think it was it, it conveyed the mood and the aesthetic choice. It, it was it was perfect. Um, it really felt like it felt like slacker for, from Richard Linklater a little bit. It was it had that passing the baton type structure because you got to really spend some time. And when I say you get to spend some time, you're spending 26 minutes on a fishing boat non-interrupted you know there's a few like cuts here and there just to kind of like focus on you know zoom ins of fish or just environment just for you know stylized choices of, of kind of moving the camera around but for the most part you are settled in your ass has roots and you are hanging out with these people and that's what makes it f- like you just kind of lose yourself and you are transported to this place as much as some of those long shots were just like a million hours scaling one fish or just like you said a half hour on a boat um as much as that sounds kind of like it would be interminable it actually wasn't really right the film didn't really drag i thought it was paced well for a documentary and um this did okay um Got nominated for the golden firebird at hong kong international film festival and the uh, glass hut original at the Berlin International Film Festival. It didn't win either award, but, you know, people didn't fall asleep during <laughs> it. You know, people, you know, nominated for an award. Have you ever been nominated for an award? I haven't, so. <laughs> uh, I was so surprised that I didn't get sleepy-eyed at all, like, during this, because I watched it super late at night, and I'm, I even watched it, like, I started going, like, yeah, I, I might watch half tonight, half tomorrow, and it was like sitting down watching a screensaver it, it, where you, you look at the clock and you're like, wow, all those designs or whatever, you know, back in like the, the 1980s or early 90s when screensavers were a thing. And then you look at the clock, you're like, oh, shit, that's 30 minutes of my life just gone looking at shapes. And that was me during this. Like I kept like after like the boat scene or after the the fish processing or, or you know, just like the door to door sales of the of the of the fish um, for, from the proprietor of the of the uh, of the store. I looked at my clock and I'm like, wow, I'm so, I'm like so into this. And it's just cause it's like so real and so charming. Like mm-hmm. everybody there is equal parts proud of their environment and also kind of, I don't want to say upset about it, but they're just like, you know, some of them uh, like the, the main lady, I guess, uh, I guess one of the, the more featured characters <laughs> she's like super depressed and she's just like, yeah, I, you know, they took my son and all this stuff happened to me and I don't really want to live anymore, but you should really uh, follow me here and here. Cause I want you to film these things because they're very important right. to me. Um, I, I think that's why the film was so effective because it is very tranquil and, yeah. you know, just really peaceful and you really kind of get into it. And then you start to get a sense of the fact that you're being shown all of this is because it's endangered. This is a way of life that's dying out. And that's what sort of, you know, gives you that kick in the ass that you get watching a documentary. You know, when you watch like some Michael Pollan movie, you're like, I'm going to go burn down a factory farm for like a half hour. And then it wears off and you go through the Taco Bell drive through. <laughs> this movie was sort of like, OK, you know, you didn't get riled up. It was just super calming. And then you're sort of like, well, this way of life is dying out for all these people. And as much as it's 7000 people in a town that like could have an Internet cafe if they wanted at the same time, it's it's just sort of sad. And I think the black and white was sort of a, a dirty trick, but like yeah, it worked. <laughs> this movie made me really sad for these people. Yeah, it, it, there's just something to be said about doing something, you know, uh, picking something as your life work. And of course, these people, most of them uh, are, are either fishermen or descendants from from fishermen. Uh, and just to see like to to live to see the thing that you put your whole life and your blood, sweat and tears into become obsolete. There's something really, you know, uh, affecting about that. And that's why I was mm-hmm. just like, Oh man, like the, the, the main guy, uh, Wei Chan, he, uh, he's like the main fisherman guy. I mean, this, this guy's like 80 something years old. He's bent in half. He, cause he's constantly bending over, you know, to, to unhook every single fish in his net. 
And he's just like, he's just telling the the filmmaker, he's just like, yeah, there used to be, you know, sea cucumbers here, but a bunch of people just showed up with their fancy gear and now there's no more sea cucumbers. And it's not like he was like mad, just like, oh, I can't believe they took all my sea cucumbers. He's just like, and that's just the way it is. Now that's I just the thing that happened. Yeah. yeah. Now I have to pay more money for my nets and I get less for, for my fish. It's, it is what it is. There's a... Uh... Not a whole ton else to say about this movie without like really going into detail and sort of spoiling it. Um, but I, I will say I recommend this movie. Um, if you're someone who likes documentaries and like what guilty white liberal doesn't love documentaries, <laughs> um, this is great. Yeah, I, I would rec- I would not recommend this for people with short attention spans or... No, because I think it'll suck you in. I think you'll be like, wow, this is really boring. And then you just like realize you just watched a dude to scale a fish for 15 minutes. That's true. Yeah, that might be it, man. I mean, this is the thing to focus people who are like, I just want to do me a million things. And you just you just sit down and you just watch it and you just get sucked in. And it's calming. This is a this movie has a very calming influence. And, um, you know. We could say anything we want about how great this movie was. Uh, this is going to make me watch a different documentary by the same director about the same town. So, sure. For what it's worth, no one asked me to watch that other movie. I'm just gonna. Yeah, uh, I would. I would put this on again, like in the background while doing stuff too. Like it's just a good. It's just a good ambient film. It's uh, Jiro Dreams of Sushi esque. Yeah, yeah, it, cinematic Ritalin. Uh, but yeah, yeah. I, I really do. Enjoy this. I, like I said before, I was really looking forward to it, and it didn't disappoint. So uh, it is now streaming everywhere. So go go spend a couple bucks and uh, go check out Inland Sea. Uh, the same year, uh, the the director uh, Katsuhiro Soda released a a movie about uh, called The Big House, where it, where it focuses on uh, just Michigan University and all the people that that work there and how that keeps that town going of Ann Arbor. So. I mean, he, he's an American Japanese filmmaker and he just he does this stuff really well. And I and I really want to go check that out now. See, I, I won't because I went to Michigan State, but <laughs> you're allowed to want to go see that movie, I guess. Perfect. Well, go check out Inland Sea. Uh, tell us if you are, you know, if it was the, the best thing you ever saw or if you turn it off after, you know, 15 minutes of of. of you know, hand fishing, let us know. Maybe we're crazy, but maybe we're not. Uh, it, it, I think it's definitely worth your time. Uh, go ahead and click the thumbs up button down below and subscribe to the channel. Uh, if you want to talk more films with me, you could find me on Twitter at Orzov Dunn or our uh, Twitter uh, for the show, which is uh, film underscore hooligans. And uh, Jason, where can everyone find you? I'm uh, Jason E. Alt on Twitter. So thanks so much for joining us. Uh, go see Inland Sea. Go track down Oyster Factory and go green.